Hello, everyone. Ah, greetings, my friend. I am Chen Stormstout, humble brewmaster of Pandaria. That's how we were introduced to Chen Stormstout, all the way back during Warcraft 3. But his story, it does not begin here. He wasn't always the legendary brewmaster, nor does he actually come from Pandaria. Instead, Chen Stormstout was born and raised on the Wandering Isle, a massive landmass on the back of a giant turtle, which they call Shenzin Su. His ancestors did indeed come from Pandaria, and the way that they ended up on the back of a massive turtle that all begins with Lu Lang. Raised on a small ranch in the tranquil valley of the Four Winds, this young Pandaren often wandered the cliffs that overlooked the sea, wondering if anything existed beyond the horizon. This was after Pandaria was shrouded by mist by their great Emperor Xiao Hao to protect his people from the devastation of the Legion and the sundering of the world. Lu Lang's curiosity, it led to him making a bold proclamation. He would embark on a great sea voyage and discover once and for all what had become of the outside world. Ignoring the warnings and ridicule of his fellow Pandaren, Lu Lang gathered a few meager supplies and began his journey. Atop the small turtle Shen Xin Zhu, he sailed through the cloaking mists. Time passed without word from Lu Lang, and the other Pandaren believed that he must have died on his foolhardy venture. Then, five years later, Lu Lang returns. Returned with incredible tales of mysterious lands and peoples on the other side of the sea. After gathering more supplies, Lu Lang set out once again. This time, he would not endure his journey alone. Shen Xin Zhu had grown large over the years, and Lu Lang's stories it inspired one Pandaren to join him on the next leg of his voyage. Her name was Shinizi, and she later became Lu Lang's wife. Every five years, Lu Lang returns. Each time, Shen Xin Zhu had become larger, and more and more Pandaren decided to join the eccentric explorer for a life of adventure. This tradition continued for decades, until the Great Turtle had grown to the size of a giant island. Misty mountains and lakes formed atop the turtle shell. In time, villages sprang up across the landscape. They became home to a thriving community of Pandaren, who would eventually name the unique refuge the Wandering Isle. On his final voyage from Pandaria, the elderly Lu Lang fell into a deep sleep from which he never awoke. In death, his spirit merged with the sea turtle himself. Lu Lang's tradition of bold exploration and daring to dream beyond the known, it did not die with him. The Pandaren of the Wandering Isle would carry on his values for many centuries to come. Yet over time, those generations, they traveled less and less. They grew comfortable and complacent, and they forgot the lessons of Lu Lang. The spark of wanderlust that had shone so brightly in their hearts, it faded. But not for all of them. Not for our Chen Stormstout, growing up on the Wandering Isle, together with his brother Chan Po, and his best friend Strongbow, or just Bo. They were the greatest of friends. Every single day, they trained together, quickly becoming the top Pandawan students. Get it? Padawans, but for Pandarans. Their fighting styles, they were very different though. Where Bo was direct, steady and unyielding, focusing on his attunement to the earth and the strength that it offers. Chen, he was more unorthodox, fast and loose, unpredictable but effective, attuned to not only earth, but also storm and fire. Many considered Chen to be the best of them, while their friends knew that the day was coming when they would have to fight each other to determine who was truly number one, who it would be to become the Geomaster, trainer of the next generation of fighters. But training and fighting, it was not the only thing that held Chen's passion. Like his ancestors, the Pandaren felt the wanderlust call to him. In his mind, it had been far too long since anyone had gone to seek the outside world, to explore it, undergo fantastic adventures, discover exotic ingredients for his brews and teas, experience life beyond the turtle. Bo told him that years of adventuring, it had taught their ancestors that there was nothing in the outside world that they couldn't find right here at home. He tried to show him that the most important things were right there in front of him, but Chen wouldn't listen. The two of them argued. And when the day of their final test had finally arrived, Chen simply left. Left his best friend all by himself to pursue his delusional fantasies. 
At least, that's how Bo saw the matters. But to Chen, the world was waiting to be explored. We don't even know the full extent of all of his adventures. Some are mentioned briefly, like the time that he tricked murlocs into making themselves into a stew, teaching ice avatars and frost giants to dance, make friends with a keeper of the grove, while bringing swift retribution to the goblins that had defiled the land, how he was captured by a band of ogres and tricked them into a drinking competition. The ogres, they got so wasted that the sober Chen could make his escape. The wandering brewmaster, he's been all across Azeroth, perfecting his brewing art and fighting style. Too many stories to share in one go, but one that definitely stands out. That is how Chen is responsible for the creation of the brew festival. You all know this celebration as the time when you try your best to obtain the mounts while getting drunk off your ass. Yeah, that celebration, it all started with Chen. He had heard that the brew crafted by Grimboos van der Brew, that it was amazing and he wanted to taste it. Now Grimboos agreed, but only if he could sample what Chen had made. They sipped and they drank and they kept on drinking. Chen even brought forth his jug of a thousand cups, which did his name proud as it seemed to nearly never run out. Nearly, as at the end they did manage to finally empty it completely. Drunk out of their mind, no winner could be declared. Bo found that the other's concoction was the better one. So to find a fair answer, they decided to have other people try their drinks and have them be the deciders. So began the festival of brews. And even back then, Corn Dyer Brew, he was quite a party pooper. He learned the contest and he won it in on it, receiving a grand total of two votes, one of them being from himself. Safe to say that Corrin was pretty pissed. The brawl that followed had Grimboos knocked out and Chen coming to his defense. Direbrew decided to retreat. Something you've actually seen play out in game. While well, the score between Chen and Grimboos, that came down to one single vote. With only one vote difference, Thunderbrew was declared the winner. If Chen had decided to vote for himself, rather than give his vote to Direbrew as he felt sorry for him, they'd simply ended up with another tie. But that's not who Chen was. He congratulated the winner and swore that he would find the perfect brew. Selflessness, graciousness in defeat, the pursuit of excellence. That's Chen Stormstout. That is the hero that his niece Lily sees him as. But not everyone in his family thinks so highly of Chen. While it's great that he's having amazing adventures across Azeroth, back home people like Bo and his brother Jumpo, they feel like Chen abandoned them. He didn't even make it to his own brother's wedding because of his travels. Now Lily, she saw it differently. The moment that she was born, Chen took a liking to her. That spark for adventure, it burns bright in both of them. Something she definitely didn't inherit from her father, rather from her mother. Zhao Li Stormstout was a Pandaren fisherwoman whose spirit would sing each time that she guided her boat, guided away from the shore, out into the open sea. She loved the fishing boats. She loved the sea. Even the risk that came with it. A risk that would cost her her life, leaving behind her husband, her daughter and son Shishai, older brother to Lily and nephew to Chen. The death of his wife made Chan Po all the more focused on keeping his family safe and together. The letters that his wild brother sent his daughter, they didn't sit right with him, filling her head with fantasies about the outside world. The adventures and dangers could lead to nothing good. But it's not just the stories that she reads from her uncle. The wanderlust, it burns bright inside of Lily, like it sparked inside of her mother. I wish I could be the perfect daughter. And sure enough, the death of his wife was a great tragedy. But the time would soon come where one must ask itself whether they believe the death of the body is a greater tragedy than the death of the spirits. Lessons for the storm stouts to be learned at a later time. Chen's journey that would find him first hanging out in the lands of Duratar, where he runs into the Magnaval Rexar and Rokan of the Dark Spear tribe. I have traveled the wide world, searching for rare exotic ingredients to use in my special brews. After all, who they can solve all the problems of this world? Don't you agree? Say, if you're free, I could use your help in locating some special ingredients for my latest brew. If you find the items on this list and bring them back to me, I'll let you sample my masterpiece. I wander alone. Perfect! Perfect! 
<laughs> These are just what I needed. Here, try a sample of my latest creation. <coughs> what the hell is that stuff? Are you trying to kill me? Ah, oh, perhaps it needs some refinement. <laughs> After all, we must learn to crawl before we can run. <laughs> Don't you agree? <laughs> well, now that my brew is complete, I can experience more of this strange, rugged land. Would you mind if I tagged along with you, warrior? Not at all, Chen. But my path is a perilous one. Ah, oh, my friend. I found that no path is too perilous when doused with strong drink. Off we go. His optimism will be put to the test, as the Rexar didn't lie. The founding of Durotar and the mighty capital of Orkrimmar. It did not come without its complications. After working together to defeat Archimand and the Burning Legion, Warchief Thrall and Jaina Proudmoore, they decided to do their best and keep the peace between the factions going. The Alliance and Horde have a long history of hostility with each other, but perhaps these two could be the example that the world needed to live in peace. But not all can let go of the past that easily. Jaina's father, Admiral Dalen Proudmoore, he did not believe that this horde was any different than the one that he had fought against, no matter what his daughter might say. So it was that Chen followed Rexar on his path of becoming champion of the hordes, while Jaina made the impossible choice. She stepped to the side while the horde killed her father, all in the name of peace. Thankfully, Chen doesn't just spend his time in Durotar fighting, he also passes on his secrets of brewing to the orcs. These brewmasters, they would take on apprentices, as heroes found out during Classic WoW. In the Barrens, they came across mementos of the Pandaren, Chen's empty keg, which they brought to Brewmaster Dron. The Orcus Brewmaster remembers the mighty Stormstyle brew, even invites adventurers to brew some delicious drinks. Rubbing shoulders with some of the mightiest heroes amongst the hordes, passing on his crafts, it does not mean that Chen is part of the faction. He is neutral, and he does not judge a person under color of their banner. It's one's actions and spirits that Chen looks out for. This allows him to also make friends on the Alliance side. People like Magni Bronzebeard, who ran into him around the time of the Third War, around Warcraft 3. They flew back more than a few, and the king told Chen that he was always welcome in his kingdom. No place was left unexplored, he even traveled to Outlands around the time of the Burning Crusade, where he obtained a Draenei necklace for his niece. The many adventures are penned down and sent home to Lily, and there, the young girl dreams her days away, thinking about what's beyond the horizon. Her people have lost that spark of wonder that brought their ancestors on the turtle to begin with. She's not like them, and after an argument with her father, she decides to have her own adventures in search of her beloved Uncle Chen. Life is an adventure! A story told in Pearl of Pandaria, which is mainly about Lily tracking down her uncle and learning more about his adventures, the ones that I mentioned earlier. Her father eventually sends Strongbow after her, but Lily is a crafty one, not easily convinced to go back home. Instead, he decides to stay at her side, keep her safe, waiting for the moment that she learns that Chen isn't all that great. Remember how Bo feels about being abandoned by Chen. A good thing that he's there though, as our young Pandaren, she's quickly noticed by quite the odd group. There was the ogre block with the alchemist goblin Rumflitz. They were working together with the Naga Sahara Dark Squall and the Orcish Blade Master Rajak. The orc has dedicated his life to the art of combat. For years he has traveled the world, seeking out the greatest fighters to test himself against them. Hearing the many tales of Chen Stormstout, of how he was one of the greatest fighters, how all Pandaren are great fighters, it made him seek out the brewmaster, a challenge that he lost. In humility, he betrayed the oath that he had sworn to remain free of demonic corruption. On Outlands, he drank demonic blood, sacrificing everything that he was to be the best. Now he must find Chen again and prove that he truly is the better. After all, our enemies are the steel that we sharpen ourselves against. While Zahara, she has her own reasons for trying to find the Pandaren. She's been ordered by her superiors to find the missing continent of Pandaria, believing that it holds the future of Azeroth. For this quest, she's going to need the Pearl of Pandaria. Once, she nearly got her hands on it, but the Murloc who possessed the Pearl, he didn't want to hand it over to the Naga. He stumbled upon the fisherman Wanjo, and with his final breath he gave the pearl to Pandaren. Sahara then tried to take it from Wanjo, but a fisherman is never alone at sea. 
A massive fish, probably one of the smaller ones that he had thrown back in his youth, it carried him to safety. She searched everywhere for him, but no trace to be found. Surely these other Pandaren, they know where to find a fisherman. But Lily, she has no idea what happened to Wanjo, nor would she tell the sea witch, even if she did. No matter. She'll find ways to make Lily talk. With a prime view of the battle between Strongbow and Rajak, all the little Pandaren had to do was to tell her what she wanted to know. Give up her secrets and the battle would end. Or don't, and watch her friend die. You are just the worst kind of person. And what a battle it was. Strongbow, one of the greatest Pandaren fighters, he gave it his all to try and save Lily's life. But the Blade Master, he has demonic blood pumping in his veins. Not to mention some spicy techniques, like the mirror image. Surrounded, the Blade Master mortally wounds Bow. In the meantime, Lily manages to rescue herself, right into the hands of the Naga, who decides to just choke the answers out of her. All seems lost, until a loud noise in the sky announces the arrival of none other than Chen Stormstout. The opponent that Rajak has been waiting for, the moment that he had lived for, the instant when two opponents face each other, evenly matched. A quiet moment in the midst of battle, when one warrior stares into the eyes of the other, mentally executing a hundred techniques, exploring countless scenarios, untold outcomes. It is said that a lifetime is fought in that single moment, the breath of eternity. This is what he's been looking for. Death has never been so close, and the Blade Master has never felt so alive. Storm, Earth, and Fire, heed my call. Countering his mirror image with his own Storm, Earth, and Fire, these two warriors truly are evenly matched. When Chen sees that his niece is in trouble, he throws Rajak's blade at Zahara, which ends her life. This might have been the opportunity for Rajak to claim his victory, was it not for Bo stabbing him in the back? Victory for our party of Pandaren. But that wound that Bo took, it means the end of his journey. Lily feels guilty about it all. If she hadn't left home, if she didn't bring him with her, this is all her fault. But the wise Geomaster, he assures her that every choice he made, he made on his own. He thought that he knew so much, but she has given him the greatest gift of all, the gift of enlightenment. Given the chance to do it all over again, he definitely would. Chen and Lily leave him behind to watch the sunrise on his own, so he may spend his final moments in peace and dignity. That feeling of guilt that would stay with her as they journeyed home to the Wandering Isle. Being reunited with her uncle, it feels like solving a mystery. But there are so many more mysteries out there in the world, like the one that the Naga was looking for, like Pandaria. If it exists, they could find it together. But Lily's father, Chompo, he thinks quite differently than these two. All he really wants to do is keep his daughter and his family safe. He was already forced to live with the fact that his brother abandoned them, rushing off into danger, shirking all their responsibilities forcing them to rely on sporadic letters just to know whether he was still alive or dead. The death of Lily's mother, lost at sea, only made the fear of losing his daughter that much stronger. So when she wanted to travel with Chen again, go on their adventures of finding Pandaria, her father was fully against it. Even Chen wasn't really feeling it. It wasn't like he was siding with her father or anything. Chen felt like both had valid points. He just felt happy being home for a bit after spending so much of his life on the road. This was new for him. This was now the adventure. But his niece, she was still young and she hadn't done hers. If Chen and her father had their way, she would never see the world. She would just grow old and decrepit, spending her days making tea and commenting on the weather. Her life would be a waste. Not the life that Lily would choose. Not the life that she would let anyone force upon her. Oh, I love exploring. Remember how the Naga Sahara was looking for the Pearl Pandaria? Well, it turns out that she wasn't wrong. The fisherman Wanjo was chosen by a murloc to hold on to the Pearl and make his escape. But when he got back to Shenzhen Zoo, the turtle swallowed him up. No biggie. When he looked into the pearl, he saw himself fishing. So that's what he did for a while. Until one morning, he woke up, he checked the pearl, and he saw himself sailing back into town. He figured that it was time to go then, hopping into his boat, and indeed, Shenzhen Zoo spat him out. Now the pearl is kept at the Great Library, where Lily peers into it, and she sees herself discovering Pandaria. Keep in mind that this is around the time of the Cataclysm, so they didn't even know if it still existed. 
most of the Pandaren on the Great Turtle. They figured that Pandaria had long since been destroyed by war or succumbed to disease or just something. Otherwise, they would have seen it again by now. That didn't stop Lily from believing that she would be the one to discover the legendary homeland of their people. With the Pearl guiding her and eventually Chen, sent off to her by her father to keep her safe. These two, they set out on their quest, their quest to find Pandaria. Not a direct road to follow, it took them all over. Ida Forge, where King Magni was now a crystal, and the council offered no aid. Stormwinds, where Deathwing had just done his thing, the world quite broken from his actions. At Booty Bay, the pro actually gets stolen by a Caitlyn the Blade of the Blackwater Raiders. But the Bloodsail Buccaneers, they raid the ship, lead it into a trap, which is Lily and Chen fighting for their lives. The day is saved by Caitlyn's father, Archmage and Serum Runeweaver of the Kirin Tor. The captain is super sorry about what she did, so she offers to sail them to Ketchistan, where she can most likely hook them up with someone willing to sail them south. But even with a famous pirate's recommendation, finding a willing captain that had proven to be impossible. Again, Lily turned to the Pearl for guidance, and it had shown her a trail across Tanaris beyond the mountains into the land of Uldum. So, to Uldum, she and Chen went, buying passage with a group of dwarves from the Explorers League. This is set after we clean up the place, so we dealt with Alakir and the Tolvir allied to Deathwing. It would be in the lands of Uldum, where Chen would learn something about himself. Something that he hadn't quite realized. The story goes, as the two of them get in contact with a Tolvir named Mendrim, he and his brother Pavet, they were part of the Never Set, those that allied themselves to Deathwing in exchange for reversing the curse of flesh, regaining their original bodies. Where Menrim saw that siding with Deathwing, it was a bad idea. His brother was all in. Now captured and put on trial, Memrin is doing everything that he can to plead for mercy, to spare his brother's life. Something in this, it sparks interest from Chen. When he hears the tale, he thinks back to his brother Chum Po, and he can't imagine what he would do if they would find themselves on opposite sides in times of war. What he would do, it was his brother that faced the executioner. So our brewmaster, he does his best to help out. He first talks to Buffett, who's all rage and anger. He makes no mention of ever truly being devoted to Deathwing, but he does spend a whole lot of time venting his hatred for Menrim and how he'd rather die with his real family than to be shown mercy. Chen tries to make sense of it. What could have happened to create such a rift between these two? And Lily lets him in on the fact that Mandarin simply left. Not because of the Deathwing thing. Even before that, he left Buffett behind to work with the priests. All the time spent away, it made Buffett feel abandoned. It wasn't about teaming up with Deathwing for him. It was about having a place to belong. A similar resentment that Bo had for Chen that Chan Po still feels. Living a life of adventure out on the road, it meant leaving behind those that cared for Chen. It did not come without consequences, something that he would have to fix later. As for now, he suggests to Menrim that he should be the one to apologize to his brother. At first, the Tolvir seems to be down with the plan, but after visiting Buffett, he doesn't acknowledge Chen or Lily. The next day, the sentencing takes place, and Buffett shows no remorse for his actions. This then followed with the executions, but Lily couldn't watch. Chen grasped her shoulders tightly, trying to prevent his paws from shaking. He did watch the executions, though he envied Lily for closing her eyes. He felt riveted, as if some intangible force demanded that he look. As with the speeches, Buffett was fourth in line. He died as unceremoniously as the others. It was over so quickly, and yet it seemed as if a thousand years had passed. Chen knew that this day would haunt him forever. The moment Menrim saw the death of his brother, he knew that he had made a massive mistake. When he went to talk to him, his brother threw accusations his way. The anger between the two, the misunderstanding, the pride, it stopped Menrim from doing what he should have done. Sure enough, he was devoted to plead for his brother's mercy, as long as it didn't involve compromising his own pride. Tears streak down his face, but Chen and Lily, they can't absolve him, which he knows he's aware about, but he's still grateful that they tried. You'd almost wonder why the Pearl would send Chen and Lily to this horrible place. But the Tolvir, he gives them a key to his boat, a boat that would send them on their way again, closer to Pandaria. As Chen checked their sacks to make sure that everything was ready to leave first thing in the morning, he noticed that Lily had smoothed a sheet of paper on the floor in front of her. 
What are you doing? Jen asked. Writing a letter home, she answered. I figured I should. It's, it's been a while. She looked up at him. Something occurred to Chen. I'd like to write one too, he said. Lily pulled some scrap paper and another stylus from the depths of her bag. Chen sat on the floor in a different part of the room and flattened the blank page before him. Dear Chompo, he began. I meant to write you sooner, but I've just been busy. Dear Chompo, he began. I owe you an apology. There are always lessons to be learned for those that keep an open heart. Even someone as well-traveled as Chen. Next leg of the journey, it hurls them into a mighty storm, which flings Lily overboard. Chen is beyond himself, believing that his beloved niece is dead. Not quite yet, she is actually picked up by an alliance vessel, keeping her eyes on a horde vessel, the one that picks up Chen. This takes place just before the bombing of Fedamore. So the horde is testing the waters, scouting it out, and the alliance, they want to keep the territory safe, so they want the horde out. Being a well-known hero amongst the hordes means that Chen gets the royal treatment. It's quite an interesting story, as during the Cataclysm, and at other times to be honest, we saw the Horde and Alliance working together. They have an allegiance to their faction, but also an allegiance to their brothers and sisters in arms, which sometimes comes into conflict with what their king or war chief demands of them. I'll link the short story in the description down below if you want to read it for yourself. To keep a focus on Chen, he would find out that Lily is on the other ship, reunite with her as the Alliance and Hordes blow each other to smithereens. Finally, they sail through an endless fog right into Pandaria. The two of them can't believe it. They've actually done it. Does this mean the spell is broken? Lily asked. Have the mist been permanently lifted? I... I'm not sure, Chen replied. But I think so. So they will come, she said. Papa and Chisai and Granny Mei and all our friends, they'll all come. An image rose unbidden in Chen's mind. Two ships, side by side, engulfed in flames, cannons firing, sailors shouting, blades clashing. A scene from nights ago. And Chen's grip tightens on Lily's shoulder. Not just our friends, Lily, he said. Everyone. And Chen would be right, of course. But that's the tale that we're going to save for next week. As I think they've been going on for long enough. So for now, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. And until next time, see ya!